Hi, this is Dr. Joshua Cooper, and this video is about the TAVR procedure to replace the aortic valve and why some people who undergo this procedure end up also needing a pacemaker. Here's the chest x-ray of a patient who has two devices implanted in their chest. First, you can see right there in the center of the heart is a little chicken wired looking device, and that's actually a TAVR valve, an aortic valve that has been replaced with this particular type of procedure. And up in the left of the chest here, our right, but the patient's left, is a pacemaker that was implanted. And you can see that the pacemaker is attached to a couple of wires that are threaded in a vein and on inside the heart. And in this patient, these two are related. The patient had the pacemaker implanted a day after the TAVR valve procedure was done. And let's review why sometimes that's the case. So let's start by first talking about what a TAVR procedure is. This is a picture of one of several different types of TAVR heart valves. They all have in common that they can be scrunched down to a really tiny size and fit into a small tube and then expanded in place where they function as a substitute heart valve. The term TAVR itself stands for transcatheter, that means working through a small, thin, long tube, aortic valve, which is one of the four heart valves and the one that is most prone to having calcium build up and getting stiff and not opening properly. Replacement. Technically, this procedure doesn't actually replace the valve. It takes the old valve and kind of smushes it and pushes it aside rather than replacing it. And in fact, that's why some people instead call this a TAVI, T-A-V-I with I standing for intervention rather than replacement. Both terms mean the same thing. Um, and again, this procedure is usually done when this aortic valve uh, no longer opens properly because of scarring and calcium buildup, making the three components of the valve very stiff. Here's a quick video showing a TAVR valve being stretched open in place, where it then functions as a substitute and brand new valve, letting blood exit the heart properly. Well, what is a pacemaker? A pacemaker is a small computer and battery that is implanted under the skin in the chest, either on the left or the right side. And it's connected to one or more wires that are threaded into a vein and on inside the heart. And those wires allow the pacemaker to receive signals from the heart and deliver electrical signals back to the heart. And it functions to treat slow heartbeat problems of various types. A very quick review of the heart's electrical system. Uh, each heartbeat starts in a natural pacemaker spot in the top part of the heart, and that fires and sends signals across the top half of the heart. And then there's a very special electrical system that allows signals to travel from the top down to the bottom part of the heart. And it's a really fascinating complex system that largely looks like an upside down tree. And this electrical tree has a trunk and two main branches, a left and a right branch called bundle branches. And this allows signals to travel from top to bottom with each heartbeat. And on the EKG, we can see electrical signals from the top and the bottom parts of the heart. The bottom part is much more muscular, so it's a much bigger electrical signal. And here's an example of an EKG from a normal heart that's electrically working properly. And you can see the top and bottom electrical signals one after the other with each heartbeat. Well, what if the electrical system doesn't work properly? And that can be true in several different ways. But for example, what if the electrical tree isn't working? Well, if that's the case, if this tree isn't working intermittently, then the top half of the heart may be firing away just fine, making all those small signals related to the top chambers, but not all of those signals make it down because that tree is not working. And you can have, therefore, a much slower pulse in the bottom half of the heart than what your body and your heart really need. In this situation, a pacemaker can be implanted and the pacemaker has wires in the top and bottom parts of the heart, allowing the pacemaker to see and control both top and bottom halves. And in this scenario, you can have the pacemaker receive signals and see each heartbeat happening in the top. And if a signal is not making it down to the bottom on its own, the pacemaker can substitute and deliver an electrical signal down to the bottom. And it'll do that only on the beats where that's needed. And that could be every single beat or every once in a while. 
and in so doing, you see the EKG will now look different. You have the top and bottom now re-coordinated. In fact, you can see these little electrical spikes, these pacemaker spikes, uh, telling us that the pacemaker is controlling the bottom part of the heart, and thereby we can restore proper communication between top and bottom and restore a normal pulse rate, thereby treating the slow heartbeat problem. So let's think about how these two concepts fit together, this TAVR aortic valve procedure and the heart's electrical system. Here I've drawn once again this electrical tree that connects the top to the bottom half of the heart. And here is the aorta, the largest artery of the body. The heart pumps blood out the aortic valve into the aorta, and then branches of the arteries go to all organs in all places of the body, carrying blood and oxygen everywhere it needs to be. The aortic valve has three components to it, and normally they open and close normally, allowing blood to exit the heart with each heartbeat, but then the valve closes to prevent blood from flowing backwards back into the heart. Here's blood being ejected from the left ventricle, the main pumping chamber, out into the aorta. And as I mentioned earlier, this valve is the one that is most prone to building up calcium and scarring that can prevent these three cusps or three leaflets of the aortic valve from separating and opening properly. And when that happens, you get something called aortic stenosis or a narrowing of this valve that makes it much harder for the heart to pump blood out into the aorta and out to the body. And that can put a big strain on the heart and can cause symptoms due to poor blood flow out into the body. And that's where this TAVR procedure comes into play. In some people who are appropriate for this type of procedure, this substitute valve can be threaded through the narrow opening of this valve that isn't working properly, and it can be expanded and push aside the abnormal valve that is scarred and open up and create a new valve where these new leaflets, these new components of the valve can open and close properly, restoring normal blood flow. The problem is that this valve sits right next to this electrical tree, just as I have drawn. And when this TAVR valve is stretched open and expanded, it can push or interact with this electrical tree. And that can happen in more than one potential place, depending on exactly how the heart is sitting, where the electrical system is, and exactly what type of valve and how it is positioned inside the heart. If that left branch is damaged, we can see this on an EKG. It changes the shape of the squiggles from the bottom chambers, and we call this a left bundle branch block. That is not necessarily a dangerous thing because the right branch still works, transmitting signals from top to bottom, but it's a signal that maybe there was some injury that happened at the time of the TAVR procedure, and we watch these patients more closely. However, if the trunk of the tree is damaged, then the whole tree can intermittently or permanently no longer work, and that can result in a different type of EKG problem that we call heart block, and that's what I was talking about earlier, where this electrical tree is no longer functioning, and you can see signals from the top part of the heart happening, but the signals aren't getting down to the bottom part, and you can have a pause in the heartbeat or a very slow heartbeat that can cause symptoms or sometimes even be dangerous. This is the situation where putting in a pacemaker will solve this problem and permanently restore normal electrical communication between the top and bottom halves of the heart. In people who have an open heart valve surgery instead of a TAVR procedure, the same thing can actually happen because again, the valve sits right next to the electrical system. So as the surgeon makes his or her cut and replaces the aortic valve in the operating room, there is also a risk for injury to the electrical system, and that potentially could also lead to a situation of heart block and needing a pacemaker. So what do we watch for when somebody is scheduled for and undergoes a TAVR procedure? 
Well, beforehand, we think about the risk factors for this person on whether they may be at higher risk for needing a pacemaker so we can watch them extra closely. And there are several risk factors, but the main one that we think about is whether somebody has a problem with that right branch of their electrical tree, a right bundle branch block, even before the procedure is done. Because if they do, and we damage either the trunk of the tree or the left branch alone, that can lead to heart block, that can lead to a slow heartbeat problem requiring a pacemaker. So that's one thing we think about in planning the TAVR procedure, and we can let a patient know that they may be at higher risk for needing a pacemaker if they go into the TAVR procedure with a right bundle branch block on their EKG. During the TAVR procedure, we have the patient, of course, hooked up to an EKG the whole time, and we look for any electrical changes that may occur during the procedure itself, including heart block, where you see the top part firing but missing heartbeats, or changes to the shape of the squiggles, suggesting that we've developed a left bundle branch block. One or both things would be warning signs that maybe this person might end up needing a pacemaker after the TAVR procedure is complete. And then after the TAVR procedure, if we don't see any changes during the procedure itself, or if we do, we still watch the patient on a heart monitor in the hospital, and we look for any evidence of late appearing blocked beats. Again, you can see here one beat that didn't make it down. There's a missing beat here. That would be a clue that maybe there is a late injury due to swelling or other further squeezing or compression of the electrical branches. Um, that can cause a problem that might end up needing a pacemaker. So how do we treat electrical issues during and after the procedure? Well, all patients who undergo a TAVR, unless the patient already has a pacemaker in place, all patients undergo a temporary pacemaker wire placement. Usually that's threaded into a vein in the neck called the jugular vein and threaded on into the heart and the end outside the body is connected to a temporary pacemaker box that has the ability to temporarily deliver electrical signals down to the bottom chambers and keep the heart beating steady and prevent any pauses in the heartbeat. Um, this temporary pacemaker is sometimes left in place as the patient is monitored after the TAVR procedure, and it can be left in place even for a day or two or sometimes even longer, um, depending on whether there were abnormalities seen during the procedure itself, or in fact, if the patient ends up needing pacing, this can serve then immediately as a temporary pacemaker to keep the heart beating. And if any abnormalities are seen, uh, either during or after the procedure that warrant pacing, then the temporary pacemaker wire can be removed and a permanent pacemaker can be put in place instead. What about patients who leave the hospital without a pacemaker because everything went just fine and we didn't see any reason to put in a pacemaker uh, at the time of the hospitalization. This either is because there, have been, there were no changes at all on the EKG during or after the procedure, which is wonderful, and in fact, the majority of the time, or it, maybe there were a uh, left bundle branch block was seen, or there were minor abnormalities noted, but it didn't rise to the level of anybody thinking that the patient needed a pacemaker. Sometimes we wanna watch the heartbeat even after the patient leaves the hospital. And we can use some type of heart monitor that we place on the skin so that we can continue to receive EKGs and heart recordings when the patient leaves the hospital, either at home or another place where they go to further recover from their procedure. And if we see on the recordings that are sent to us from outside of the hospital from this heart monitor, uh, for example, in this case, there are some blocked beats and missing beats, um, then that patient may end up being called and uh, told they need to come back to have a pacemaker implanted because occasionally you can see late injury to the heart's electrical system that was not seen during the hospitalization and that could signify further risk of slower heartbeats in the future causing symptoms. So in summary, uh, TAVR is a procedure that can fix an aortic valve, usually one that's too tight, not opening properly, without needing open heart surgery. The new TAVR valve is opened and sits right next to the heart's fragile electrical system and can push on it. And this could potentially cause temporary or permanent injury to the trunk of this electrical tree or the left branch of this electrical 
tree, and if that is seen, then pacing may be needed. A temporary pacemaker is used in almost all patients during the TAVR and sometimes for a day or two after to make sure that we don't let the heart ever go too slow without the ability to rescue by this temporary pacemaker. And if any indication is seen that the electrical system is injured, then a permanent pacemaker can be implanted safely and effectively, and that will absolutely solve the problem and take care of it. And, um, and that will keep the person safe in the long run. I hope this was a helpful video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have more questions about pacemakers in general, I have another video that I've created that gets into more detail about what a pacemaker is, how it functions, and living life with a pacemaker as well. So please feel free to link to that video and watch it as well. And I hope that that's helpful for you too.